It is my honor. It's my pleasure. Could you stand up and help me welcome one of the best Philadelphia Eagles that have ever graced this field, Donovan McNabb! Philadelphia. I stand here to let you know I truly love and respect everything that you've given me for 10 years. The city of brotherly love. Thank you. Philadelphia, could you do me a favor and look over here up in the rafters to the left over here on the home side? We got something special for you, Five. No one ever will ever, ever wear a number five again. So Donovan McNabb, the Eagles' top draft choice as any quarterback. After all these years, time has gone by right. from the beginning of when you began here. How much does this feel like home? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable the 11 years that I've spent here. And, and um, you know, this is one that you're familiar with the area. You know what the great restaurants are. Uh, you know the ins and outs. Um, flying into Philadelphia feels like it's, it's like you're coming back home, so to speak. Like you've been away from college. And uh, you're coming back home to see family and friends. All the guys that you grew up with here um, are, are still still here, still at the same places. You know how to get there. Uh, so it's, it's a wonderful feeling uh, being in this area. Being the quarterback yeah. of the Philadelphia Eagles uh -huh. might be the single biggest lightning rod position in sports in this city. Really? Yeah. Um, I know it shocks you. Um, <laughs> You managed over the course of the time that you were here to continue to be you right. in the middle of all of that. Right. I've seen a lot of other guys who had a lot of trouble doing that. Why were you able to still be Donovan McNabb? My parents always instilled in me to be you. Don't be a guy who, you know, you're one, one person one day, you're another person the next, you're another person the next day because people can see through you. But one thing for sure, everybody in that locker room knew who I was, how I prepared, the attitude that I brought. If I was loose or if I was serious, they knew when that time was gonna happen. Um, I didn't believe in putting a mask on and you know, trying to please someone. Um, so I never let what people may say on the outside or how people's opinion may kind of affect who I am as a person that never affect what I did out on the football field. That bothered some people yeah, that because it it couldn't break, you, they it? couldn't break my shell. Yeah, I mean, that, that had to make it harder for you while you were it here. It didn't make it hard. It, made it actually made it easier for me. Because I think when people continue to pat you on the back so much, at some point you got to wonder, I mean, do you really feel that way about me? Or are you just putting it on the front? I love the fact that people were honest, and that's how they felt, because I was going to be honest with them. Why was it important for you to retire as an Eagle? It's closure. In the book of Donovan, <laughs> you have to have closure. Where do I get that book, by the way? It'll be out of store soon. All right, cool. Yes, it's a touching book. <laughs> but uh, you have to have closure in your life. Um, hey, you know, you'll be hearing of Brett retired as a Green Bay Packer. You know, Jerome Bettis retired as a Steeler, you know, list goes on and, and I, I think for me yes the last two stops I was able to get a bagel and cream cheese and some coffee um, you know maybe some oatmeal too but uh, I think when you overall look at my career in Philadelphia 11 years I think I owe them that I owe them the thank you the I appreciate you uh, and I always bleed green could you have seen that 
coming to fruition? Could you have seen that happening from the day that you started here? Did you know that that was going to be where this ended up? I would love to sit here and say yes, uh, but no. And I think for all draftees that come in, you want to come in and just play the way you played in college and better. You want to be known as one of the best players at your position, one of the best players in the league. Uh, that's something I think with my mindset, every time I spent in the weight room, every time I was out running, every time I was preparing for a new season, that was my attitude. Hey, this year I'm going to be the best in the NFL. I'm going to, we're going to win a Super Bowl. I'm going to win MVP, you know, things like that. And uh, whatever motivation drives you, uh, those are things that talking to the players that I played with, that was what pushed us. You know, it was you're the last guy in the building watching film. You know, then you, all of a sudden you think you're the last guy and all of a sudden you see another guy walk in. It's like, ah, maybe I should have spent another five minutes. Uh, it was the competition. It was the challenge. And I think that's what made us who we are uh, as, as human beings. You know, not just football players, but as human beings. It's tough for this community to embrace its sports stars while they're playing here. Yeah. Really tough. Yeah. Very few of them have actually had that kind of acceptance You're while right they've there. been playing. Yeah. As time goes by, people start to realize what it was that an athlete contributed, and that changes. Have you felt that change? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that was brought to my attention during the middle of my career and then toward the end of people say, hey, don't worry about it now they'll look back on it and say, you know what, they truly appreciate you. And, you know, you hear it, it's just like, hey, man, what, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> but, you know, it was fun for me. Again, I kept a smile on my face at all times because it was funny to me. Of everything that we had accomplished, you know, it still wasn't enough. And uh, it wasn't enough for me personally as a player because you want great things. You want to go down as the greatest to ever do it. Um, but. One thing I can say, if they roll the tapes of since I played and the players that I played with, the highlights that you see, it brings a little energy into you. You have a little kick you know, to say, you know what, I miss those years. Eagles Unscripted is brought to you by Sports Authority, official sporting goods retailer of the Philadelphia Eagles, Novacare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy, and by Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals, the official hospital of the Philadelphia Eagles. If I backed off, I'm going to you. All right. Okay. That's all, that's all I'm looking for. Now. Okay. This is your show. How you go, it goes. All the way. Hey, nice job, huh? That's the way you shoot that, baby. We're going to keep doing it, huh? Good, nice. Don't forget your hot throw. Yeah, yeah. And then if you don't like that, and you don't like that, run. Don't let, don't ever let them see if you're frustrated or not, right? Okay, don't, don't even worry about that. We're going to be okay. Constant through all the time that you were here was Andy Reid. Yeah. And from the days that he was pushing you as a young quarterback to be a leader on this team. Right. Right on through to the end. Tell me a little bit about what that relationship was like and how it evolved over the course of time. Um, the thing for me, I had the opportunity and the privilege of being with one coach for 11 years. That's rare. To be a starting quarterback for a franchise for over 10 years and have the same coach, pretty much the same coaching staff throughout the whole, whole duration. It's rare, but it's fun. And it got to the point later in my career where it was like, before he even finishes his sentence, I know what he's going to say. Or you look in his face and you know exactly what he's thinking. Or you knew what he was going to eat because he ate a lot. But, um, but it's like you mess with each other. And it's a bond that you build that everybody around you feels the energy. And it's like, oh, man, Andy's about to come over here. And before he comes over, I'll say what he's probably going to say, and he'll just turn it back around and go. It's just it's that feeling that we had. It's interesting that that pinnacle of success that happened through all of those years right. culminated in getting to a Super Bowl. Right. So the question that I would have for you is, was that the best moment, or was there something else? The best moment for me, uh, 
it, it's tough to say. I mean, obviously the Super Bowl is the ultimate goal and to make it and to be the third African-American to play in the Super Bowl uh, is something special. But I, I, don't, I don't just pick out one particular play or game. Week in and week out was fun for me. It was, we battled so much through the week uh, with the trash talking, the, you know, the extra incentives in the locker room, you know, to being in the meeting rooms, we're challenging each other. Sunday was just an opportunity to see a different helmet, a different player, to try to, to, try to dominate them. Uh, so I look at, if it's one particular thing, I would say just all the guys in the locker room being themselves. So fourth and 26 is not what stands out? No, no. Uh, that's part of the business. Are you sure? That's part of the business. You know, nobody expects, it's just like any other game. It's like, they're not going to be able to do it. Then you have someone over here that's like, I think it's going to get done. Then when you make it, hey, it's first down. Let's go. Then you got to score. Then we get in the end zone. And it's like, hey, we're going to win this game and you end up with it. Those are things that kind of, it's, it's the course of the game. You don't know when that big play is going to happen or if it's going to happen, but you got to be ready. Terrell Owens out to the far side. McNabb's right. He's back. Looks to Owens. He's going for Owens in the end zone. He's got it. He is going deep, and it is caught, and in for a touchdown, Terrell Owens. He scores a touchdown, and he attacks another banner. Terrell Owens caught the pass, did a pirouette, and took off for 37 yards. Oh! Let's go! Controversy is always going to be in the middle of a football season in any city. Certainly in this city, there's going to be it. I find it strange that still after all this time, somebody like Terrell Owens. Yeah great football player, took you and your team to a completely different level. There was another side of that, that the off the field probably was not as, pleasure, as pleasant or pleasurable as you want it to be. Right. Looking back in the rearview mirror on that now, I mean, clearly, you're talking about a superb talent who brought this team to another level. Any regrets? Not at all. Not at all. Hey, some things go well, some things don't. But 2004 went extremely well. 2005? Started out decent, you know, we had some success. But the whole thing about it is, do I regret? Do I look back on it and say, man, we shouldn't have done that? Absolutely not. That was a historic year, no matter how you look at it. I'm very excited. This is something that uh, well deserved from um, Playing as long as he did and doing what he did and having the run that we had during the duration. Um, it, it's just a blessing. It's just one of those things that when you play this game, you're not really thinking about those type of accolades. And when they finally come, having your careers over with, you can sit back and look at them and you recognize what you and your teammates accomplished. This is a huge thing. You played with some people here who will always be held as legends. Right. That group that you got an opportunity to be with for a good chunk of years through that success, how close were you then? How close are you now? Very close. Very close. And, and it's a bond that we started. Uh, Brian and I, it's funny, Brian Dawkins and I uh, met and competed against each other in his very last game as a Clemson Tiger. It didn't work out well for him. Uh, and I continue to reiterate that at times. Um, but that's when it started with us. And then when I was drafted, uh, it was a friendship that was built instantly. And not so much for a football standpoint, but more for, I would say, kind of a, an attitude, so to speak, preparation, um, desire to be the best. We had that from a quarterback standpoint to the quarterback on the defense. Uh, Brian Westbrook, obviously. I've known Brian since he was a sophomore junior at, at uh, Villanova. My wife was academic, his academic advisor. And uh, we had chances to talk. Then when he was drafted, it was, you're here now. So let's go to work. And we pushed each other. We drove each other. It was, I had trusted him. He had trusted me. And that's how I feel when you mention those guys that I've played with. It's great players on the field, but better players off the field. Under center with McNabb and Malone. Donovan McNabb goes back to Philadelphia for a press conference. I'm retiring an eagle. And they drop, we're retiring your number on number five.
Donovan, congratulations, partner. Thank you, thank you. You know, I tell you, it's it was a it was a it was a great day. You know, started out very nice and and continuing on and here on the radio for all our listeners. Yeah. <laughs> Your media now. Yeah. Gives you an opportunity to certainly be as out front with your opinion right. as you want it to be. Is that tough for you to do, or is that a, a relief to be able to finally say, you know what, I'm going to uncork this thing. I got a couple of things I want to say. <laughs> well, yeah, that was my thought process too, but that's 11 years of getting everything. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but you know what, the whole thing about it is that's what I wanted to do. Uh, when I was in fifth grade, I told my parents that I would become a sports broadcaster. I wanted to be an analyst. Uh, and you in fifth grade, you know, your parents are like, oh, that's great. You know, you have a job, you know, go to the right school. That's part of why I chose Syracuse for the football, but uh, being one of the top broadcasting schools in the nation. Um, I used the experience during the NFL, during the off seasons of working with NBC, working with ESPN, gaining that experience. But it gives me the opportunity to express my opinion, express my experience of what I'm seeing. I'm not being hard on anyone. Uh, I believe there's a difference between explaining what you're seeing and how you're, what you've seen and how you've played and your approach than criticizing somebody and making it personal. You know, there's still a fraternity of football players that we're still a part of, but as an analyst, that's my job to explain something and then give your opinion. Eagles Unscripted is brought to you by Sports Authority, official sporting goods retailer of the Philadelphia Eagles. Novacare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy. And by Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. One last thing. I can look back over the entire time from the draft day and what that became, the legend right. that that became, right up to the end of the time that you were here, up until today. And I have the power, I don't have the book of Donovan, but I have right. the book of Scott in this case. I can change one thing that you regret, would love to be able to turn back the clock and change what happened. What is it? To be able to hold up that trophy. To have the Super Bowl trophy here in, in Novacare Center and to walk past that each and every time and say, you know what, I was a part of that. Thank you. Thank you. Simply put, when, when all is said and done, this man, number five, Donovan McNabb, was a franchise-changing quarterback. As a person, Donovan was an all-time great person. Um, somebody who treated everybody in the building exactly the same. And when you have one of your top field generals and leaders treat everyone the same, it exemplifies everything I know I believe in, in, in running an organization. You know, just like Mr. Laurie said, one of the best players that played the game. Obviously, you did so many things throughout your career that are so meaningful to people, but when you walk in this building, people enjoy having you around. Um, it's a meaningful moment today for me to celebrate your career. Uh, a big part of your career, a big part of my career is being, being able to play with you, um, and I appreciate that. I believe that we went out and put a product on the football field that the Philadelphia fans could be proud of, that they can own. Now, I know we didn't bring the ultimate, and that, that hurts us all. But at the end of the day, if you look at what we were able to accomplish with this man at the helm, because a lot of it, a lot of it had to do with what he did on the football field. So, Donovan, once again, brother, I appreciate it. I appreciate the way you played, the man that you are, and I thank you. And it's a pleasure for me to call you friend. I love you, brother. Thank you.